we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Right big. Check it, check it, check it. This unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 my Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you have to hop on over to our YouTube channel. And, you know, we love your subscription, but we would love your membership even more. How you get to our membership section is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership today. Click it, take you through all the different procedures. Thank you in advance, and we love you. Hey, man, this guy right here don't need no introduction, man. This guy is a Hall of Famer, guys. It's just kind of <laughs> like that. This guy right here been engineering and dealing with music uh, since, since before a lot of y'all was born. I was just a, I was a youth, a youth, as mm-hmm. they say sometimes, mm-hmm. man. A bonsai is in the building. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Greetings. Thanks for having me. It's Thank good, you for coming on the show, man. Thank boss you. talk 101 where the bosses talk we got a boss that done pulled up on us yes, mm-hmm. yes. so we're gonna get into it but my wife like to go a little different she likes to get into the personal you yes right. the background and so forth yeah. i know you were born in new jersey right yes um but your last name is italian so you have a heritage is it your grandfather father what is it yes my grandparents came over from italy okay so, yeah so awesome did you know them yeah, I, I was born and raised in the house with them and uh, lived the first part of my life uh, in the countryside in New Jersey with awesome. uh, the Caruso family. Can you speak the language? Si, poquito, poquito. <laughs> 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 okay, so how was it being raised by, um, I would say, immigrants? Yes, yeah. Um, because I know that, um, like, me being from Jamaica, and our culture is a lot different from when you deal with American culture. Mm. So, so um, how was it, like, being raised by immigrants? It was uh, very, as I get older, the more I appreciate it because mm-hmm. it really gave me a perspective of, you know, realizing how hard they worked. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't have it easy, you know, not speaking the language and, you know, their ed- level of education. And they worked really, really hard for me to get an education. Mm-hmm. And I, I respect that so much. I'm very grateful and thankful for the struggles right. that they went through that the kids that I went to school with, they didn't have those struggles. Exactly, you know? so exactly. They all had their... Were well, they more strict? Yeah, oh, big time more strict. Exactly. Yes, big time more strict, yes. And it was good, though, because it made, taught me to be a gentleman and, right. and to respect people and be kind and, and work hard. Exactly, you know. exactly. So were you raised by your mom and dad? My mom. I never by really had a, a father. I was, really? I was raised mostly by my mom. I had a stepfather for a little while, but that didn't work out really too mm-hmm. well. Where did, where's your dad? Everybody has a father, so oh, tell geez. me. Uh, here's a so story. Go ahead and tell me that you. story. So I, I, I thought my father was dead my whole life. He was mm-hmm. gone. I don't, I don't know anything about him. Was that what your mom told you? Yeah. I never okay. saw a photograph or I didn't know really anything about him. So I tried to find his death certificate in mm-hmm. 2002. I was living in New York City and I tried to find his death certificate and I found him alive. What? He's alive. So who, who gave the name to you? She did? I, f- I found his name is James Green. My name was James Green when I was born. That's my mm-hmm. name, James Green. I changed it to Caruso when I turned 18 out of respect for my immigrant right. grandparents who went through all that to raise me. Exactly. I was like, I don't, who is this person Green? I'm not. There's no Green in my family. I'm so she did. At least she gave you his last name. Yeah. So I changed it back right. out of respect. Right. And then all my life I thought he would perish. He was gone. Yeah. So I tried to find a death certificate and I found him. He's alive in Arizona. Arizona. Wow, oh, man. man. I met him, and he's a musician. See? Oh, you know, man. Imagine you why. You can't make this That's up. why it's so important to know where we come from. A lot of times, I have friends who, you know, women, not a lot, but not, um, that's a lie. A lot of women, especially in single parent households, they get so angry and be like, take the child away, and like, you're not going to see them, da da da. And it's a lot of mess. And I always tell, because I have friends who do that, and I'm like, no, you cannot. Do that. The kids need to know where they're from. They need to know why they do what they do because they're going to look at you and be like, okay, well, you don't have a musical bone in your body. You don't do this like I do, so yeah. forth. So yeah, th- yeah. it's very important to know where you come from. Yeah, it is. I think for my mom, they were very young. They were like mm-hmm. 20 years old when they had me. And I think she was embarrassed and he was an alcoholic and a drunk. Okay. And it just no money. We lived in a shack with mm-hmm. no heat or anything. It was, it but was he knew bad. about you, though. Yeah, he did. But he, when my mother kicked him out, he, she said, don't ever contact us again. And he kept his promise and he didn't. So when you finally 
found him, what did you say to him for the first time? Oh my gosh. How was that conversation? I, did you email him? How did you contact him? No, I, I have, I, okay, so it was 2002, mm -hmm. uh, the year after 9-11. I lived right near the World Trade Center in mm -hmm. downtown Manhattan. But they, pay, they passed the Patriot Act. So you, it made it illegal to use a, a social security number for a Google search. Really? Because if you go, if you search James Green, you're right. going to get 28 million. Exactly. That's why I was wondering how you found him. That's a very common name. This is the Antoine Fisher story. I can <laughs> tell you right now, I've seen the movie. Don't try to play me. I know right. what's going on. I've already heard about it. Let's go. So how did you do it? So I, I found a, a piece of paper in the attic with this social security number on it. Uh -huh. So... Uh, but the government makes it leave. If you're a corporation, mm -hmm. you pay the government $50 or 100 bucks, and they'll do the search for you. If you're oh, a corporation, so that's lucky. I'm a corporation, I have a, rec I have a record company. So right. I use my corporate status to get one name and an address, not right. a death certificate. He was alive. Wow. So I called him up and I was like, did you marry Josephine Caruso in New Jersey in 1963? He's like, yeah. I was like, hey, Pop, I'm, co <laughs> I'm coming over. <laughs> How old were you? I was 39. Yeah. Wow. And when you when you when you when you when you talk to him, what did he say? How old was he? He was sixty something, sixty five. Okay. Oh, and he was he was he was he happy to hear from? He was happy to hear from me, and I spent a week or two with him. We played a concert together on stage. Awesome. We, we made the cover of four mag, uh, newspapers, and uh, we raised money for the fire department, the local wow. police department in Chino, Arizona. He must have been so and proud of you when he, when you caught him up to all the things that you had been doing. Yes. Oh my gosh. And, and unfortunately, he passed away about a month later after I met him. Wow. That was but everything but happened was all for right. a reason. That was all <laughs> exactly. Wow. exactly. You couldn't do nothing but smile. Oh yeah. my God. He's like, God, yeah. God did that. And then I got to meet all these other brothers and sisters I never knew I had. Oh wow. man. Was any of them musicians? Many? Papa was a rolling how stone. Many? He got around all different m mothers. But, um, I know, but how I many? Nine altogether. Wow. And yeah. I never knew. Any, any other musicians? Uh, one's a DJ. Okay, uh, that's okay. hard. That's yeah. hard. One's a DJ, and another guy who plays a trumpet player, but he's an me auto mechanic in Washington <laughs> State. He plays a trumpet. So that's in the blood, man. You that's can't, it. You can't deny it. It's definitely in the Wow. Genes. So he that's knew when awesome. you said musician, you're like, yeah, that's my. That's when my I walked son. into his house, I was like, there's a guitar, a piano, and a drum kit. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You're like, I know this. He didn't Bob. know anything about me. He didn't right. know I've been making music my whole life. And, Wow. He made records and everything. See, wow. And that's another reason why you need to know, because you could have ended up dating one of your sisters and didn't right? even know. That, that would have been weird. <laughs> well, not really, because you wouldn't have knew it was your sister. And mm -hmm. it would have been weird if y'all had a child, because it you might come out, find out a little <laughs> bit uh, weird. I've, I've heard that story, too. That story's out there, where a brother married his sister because they didn't know. Uh -huh. yeah. That story's out there, so it can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. So, you know, researching you was so, e you know, it was with ease because mm. of the people that you've worked with, man. You work with so many people when it come down to it, like, uh, hey, Nas sticks out for me, Nas, and w was it Damian Marley? Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess mm -hmm. that up, yeah. you know. Yes. But that Madonna. Was, yeah, Madonna. But I want to talk about. Ties. Yeah, Cis let, let, yeah. Don't don't just speed by Nas and <laughs> Damian yeah, like right. that. You know, I, right. I really like. I said Nas is one of the ones for me. You know, I've been I've been really really tapped into hip-hop for a long time and and you know being that he's one that you know he's been doing it for a very very long time i, I remember seeing roxanne shante say she told him boy don't come back over here in that movie she said don't you come back over here unless you got your rhyme i thought together. about that same don't you bring part. your butt back over here <laughs> and he remembered that and he got himself together of course dealing with people like you and how old were you how old was he when you was dealing with uh, him? i worked on the queen's bridge finest album with mm -hmm. him yeah uh, he yeah had, he he had just um, he brought this young up and coming artist to the studio. His name was 50 Cent. Hey! <laughs> he brought 50 Cent yeah, with him we when he came. His very first record. 50's wow. very first record. What's it, the name of the first record? I don't remember the name. Yeah, of but he was probably though. talking about somebody. But it 50 was Cent. before he, but it was his second record that really blew up. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Did wow. you did you get y'all talk often and go over the music or y'all didn't even talk? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We worked closely together. Close in together. In those days. See, that's what I miss a lot about the, especially in New York City and all these studios, the Hit Factory, you know, quad recording, unique recording. It was like the vibe. We were all in there making these tracks together, like every day, every night, all night. And the vibes, you know, we got to eat together and you know talk about the music and just it was a really great time. It was a really good time in hip hop. Wow. Early hip hop records, especially with Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, and all of those guys. It was I, I, lo I love those days. I was very blessed to be in that. You know, in those yeah, songs. in the midst mm -hmm. of that, like like mm -hmm. hip hop. 
hip hop. Yeah, you know, I, you from the East Coast. You know what I mean. I I used to have problems with y'all because I just feel like y'all such arrogant people. <laughs> you know, like y'all brought hip hop the mecca. You guys are definitely dope. I love. If I'm gonna go, I'm Rakim, Eric B. I'm, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm EPMD. I'm uh, MC Shan. Um, yeah, I can keep going. You know, KRS One. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm the I'm I'm with the original Dun Dollars, the Run DMC, Fat Boys. Uh, you know, that's me, Cool Mo D. Even when he what, is Cool Mo D up there with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. So you know, that's me. You know. Yeah. Now, when you get down here a little bit more, here we come. You know, there's. There's a litany of a second generation that comes after even that, you know, or third, y'all could say third generation, right? Mm -hmm. Cause when you talk about Cool Hurt and all those guys, yeah. it, how far did you go back with it? Did you, the start of hip hop, you was right there? It was 1982. Mm. You was right there. Yeah, but the, yeah, my first job in the studio, I was 18 years old. Um, and yeah, it was with Melly Mel and Grandmaster Fast, Zulu Kings, Africa Bombada, yeah, Africa yeah. Islam. Yeah. And, you know, the, the Lin drum was a new drum machine and the 808. So we were rocking those drum, those drum machines back in. Everything was, you know, analog. And it was a great time. Was Did really you ever time. work with Ice T? Yeah, I've done a couple of things. I worked on his first album. Uh, was it Ryan Pace? I think mm, I did I the Ryan so. Pace mm. album. Yeah. Wow. How was it working with oh, Ice T? He was wonderful. Was, I think we did that whole album in like a week. Mm. We really? I, re I just remember it was like every day, boom, boom, boom. He's very easy out. to work with. Yeah. He, oh, he was great. Because yeah. he was from and Jersey also, originally yeah, too, Jersey right? Y'all both from yeah. Jersey. And he was also a member of the Zulu Kings. Exactly. With, with mm -hmm. Grandmaster, no, with uh, Melly Mel, Kaz, mm. Grandmaster Kaz. Ice T and who's was it is Africa Islam I think because mm -hmm. I remember he Kings. said that because we interviewed him so I remember he he spoke Those about that. Those are great records. Mm -hmm. the, the beach, my car. Oh, you know, they were great records. <laughs> I, I can still recite all those rhymes. I remember all those. But out of everything that you could have um, branched off into, why did you branch off into hip hop? You could, there's so many other genres of music at the time. Why did you go into well, hip hop? Well, at that time I was an intern. I was just learning, and mm -hmm. I got a job at a recording studio. I was 18 years old, and I would just got thrown into these sessions. And okay. these are the guys that would come in late at night. Mm -hmm. And then they started calling the studios and be like, no, we want the, the white dude with long hair because they used to have long hair. It's like, no, we want to work with him because, you know, because I would rock the drum machine right. with those guys. And I wasn't like your other engineers that just mm -hmm. sat there and push right. a button, you know. Right. Uh, you got me. I got involved because I'm so, a musician first. So. But who, who took you? Because when you first was an intern and you got there, you know, somebody usually take you under their wing to show you the ropes of how to do things and stuff. Who was that person for you? The owner of the studio left me the keys. That's and it. I just lived there 90 hours. I stayed at the YMCA. I didn't even have a place to live. Right. I lived at the YMCA for 50 bucks a week. Exactly. And I slept on the couch and I worked in the studio 90 hours a week. Because when you moved there, you moved with, I heard was $50 in your pocket That's or something it. like that. You didn't have no money. You quit no. your job and you just said, you I know what, I'm going to I was shoveling horse manure every morning. Wow. Yeah. And you branched off then to this and blew up. Yeah. Did you ever imagine this is where you would have ended up? No, not really. <laughs> and it was never even about the money or the fame or anything. I just love music mm -hmm. is a savior to me. It saved my soul. It just, I, know I went through some rough times as a kid and it really really gave me hope right. and uh, just it, it's such a deep part of my soul ever since I was really really young mm -hmm. and uh, I just knew that's what I had to do it was never about money it was never about fame still to this day so um, I know that you branched off into reggae um, what is the difference of producing like your hip-hop compared to producing a reggae music I know there has to be some things that you had to learn and there are adjust differences to. and there are similarities too okay. the, the differences I mean the, there's a soul uh, in both of these the mm -hmm. genres of music that's uh, you know slightly different the, the tones the tonal aspect in terms of production for the Jamaican stuff is all about those tones of getting mm -hmm. the bass and the drums and those rhythms to sit right right okay so, and you feel it you know it just sits right and where hip hop is a similar but different, it's a little bit more aggressive in some some okay. regards, and a little more straightforward pounding, you know, in terms of quantized clock kind of vibe, okay. you know. Okay. Whereas the the, the reggae is a little bit swingy, a little loose, you know, it's nice. Almost every reggae makes you want to dance. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Wow, I, I just you know when I think about you and everybody that you've been in that studio with. 
that there had to be some great times in there over the years, you know. Yeah. I know it kind of took away when they started, you know, send me that. Oh, you could just send it to me. Just send it. Yeah. You was before that. No, I miss You know what I mean? Days. Yeah, it was just nice to have now it's all like, of us send together. Send me this. Send me that. Oh, send me this. All right, all right I'll send it to you. Right. You know, and you don't have, and it take away yeah. from the essence. How much do you feel from the time you guys started to, go, to going into the phase now of where everything's so digital? You know what I mean? Everything's so different. Uh, everything's people don't do really care to. I don't need a deal. I can be independent. I can blow up online. Social media's here. Yep. How tough is that transition? Well, I mean, for me, I'm just blessed to have the skills that I have to make. I'm a song guy, so I know how to make songs be the best. So mm -hmm. I want to make the song the best it can be. So bringing out the elements of the song to just all the, the best elements to give it the vibe that it deserves, you know, to come across um, accurately uh, for the artist, uh, for the song itself. Um, so that's the way I've always approached it. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, it's I've been blessed with that because it's been a very interesting transition. The music business has basically redefined itself, right? Mm -hmm. Over the years. And exactly. To watch that take place through mm -hmm. the 90s, especially the mid 90s when everything got digital. When, you know. Some people couldn't transition. And people fell off. And then the, then the advent after that of the independent labels right. and the independent artists. Exactly. And the, the, mm -hmm. yeah, the different roles that the major labels play now. And, so, but okay. So, do you know all of the Marley boys? Yeah. Have you met all of them? Yes. Out of all of the Marley boys, who would you say reminded you the most of Bob? Oh, geez, that's a tough one to answer because they all do in one way or another. I have to say Stephen, really, okay. Stephen Marley. Why? I, I, what is it about him? Just a a, a, a raga strength, a, a, a um, confidence, mm -hmm. right, and. And sweetness too, and just you know, very sweet, but also very smart, right. extremely smart, and very determined and hardworking, and you know, really love the music. spiritual. It's a right. very spiritual okay. thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. But they all, Damien does his thing his way. You know, he's, you they know, all younger. are so different. And, and it's so Julian crazy. and yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So okay, so I know that you um, when you met Madonna. I heard because someone asked you out of all the people you've ever met, who were you so called starstruck, so to say, over? And you mentioned Madonna. What was um, the thing about Madonna that you were so that you loved the most? And did she actually measure up to all your expectations when you met her? Yeah, and then some. I really? Mean, yeah, she's a powerhouse. She's very smart, mm -hmm. um, and she's very determined. And at the time we were working together, I worked on the remixes for the Erotica album, mm -hmm. uh, early 90s. And she was up for the role in Evita. She, mm -hmm. she wanted that role. And she was mm. studying. She would sit in the studio and with VHS, stacks of VHS tapes, watching Humphrey Bogart movies, 1940s black and white old films, and she would just study them and watch them. And I, this girl was, she's like, wow. I'm gonna get that role. I'm gonna, and she did, she landed it. Wow. I, was like, I mean, she's wonderful to work with. It's a very quirky and, and just uh, di such a diversity in terms of personality. And, and, you know, she can be super serious and hardcore. And everybody thinks, oh, it's, it's really heavy and then super light and funny and laughing a minute later. It's, like a virgin touched for the very first time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, she's one of the ones that, you know, she was able to transcend culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was able to cross over and connect with all types of people in all walks of life, which makes her totally, you know, different than a lot of the artists. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of like she helped a lot. I mean, even I believe Tupac hung out with her. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. she was one that she she kicked it with everybody. Yeah, you Casey know? and JoJo. Casey Jodeci and JoJo. Yeah. yeah. Didn't didn't. Did Rodman hang out with her? Yes, yes. He, was so over, he would come by the studio. Come on, now, you know Rodman. Yeah, he, would, yeah. he, would, he would come by and hang out with and her. And he loves music. And, he's and he very loves creative. women. He loves <laughs> the women, baby. Don't get it <laughs> twisted. And he would wear a dress, too. He don't mm -hmm. care. He would wear a dress and get a piercing. That's, that That's my guy. He is weird but artistic. He's from Dallas, Texas. And that's my guy. He would yeah. show up in the studio with, you know, 
dozens of roses wow. for, for people. Oh. Yeah. He was not, yeah. He's at he's a different level, a different yeah. different tier of a guy. You know what I mean? A lot of times people didn't know how to deal with him because he was different. Mm -hmm. And that happens, but look, I mean, that's just a part of it, man. How many times have you been in there, man? Do you do you run into stumps where dang man, like I can have a like a, a moment where you're trying to figure out where to go with the music? Yeah, sometimes there are challenges like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know now. No, no, yeah, come on. Because yeah. you're trying to make something great. Yeah. You're and trying it, to make something last forever. Yeah, and it can come from any source. It could come from the producer. It can come from the artist. It can even come from management or the record label trying to fit it into a certain kind of a box or something. Mm -hmm. You know, so you get these challenges that can come from any direction, right? Yeah, and so, that's, that, that, that's, it. that's what it's all about. I got a question because you worked with Whitney's mom. Yeah, sissy. Okay. So, someone mentioned this to me once, and you have to tell me if you think that this could be possible. <laughs> okay? I know what's going this on. is a hypothetical this is because so I don't crazy. know if this is true because according to them, it's true. Okay. Do you believe that Whitney Houston could be Elvis Presley's daughter? Ooh, I've never heard that one. <laughs> I didn't, I've never heard that before. Um, it it was a thing. Know. It was a thing. They said that she was the backup um, singer for Ev Elvis Presley before. So you have to look uh, that I didn't up. Know about that? <laughs> yes. But when we were I working on up. Sissy's album, uh -huh. it was a gospel record, right? And she would bring her daughter Whitney. Whitney mm -hmm. and I are about the same age. Yeah. And Whitney would bring her another friend of hers to sing harmonies, backgrounds on Mom's record, and mm -hmm. his he was a young man by the name of Luther Vandross. Oh. Hey. He was, a, he was amazing. Yeah. Do, 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 I love me some. Before do, anybody knew this guy, she was bringing him. That's who I put on every time. And the two of them harmonizing, they sound great together. Why did dude sing like that? But could he sing? Did you, oh, you yeah. heard him sing? Just oh, yeah. sing while oh, y'all standing there. Yeah, oh, yeah. You knew he was gonna be big. Yeah. He had he had that velvety yes voice that just you know had that texture to it you know that tone. So my next question is: out of all the hits that you've had to work on, which one was the most difficult for you to do, and how long did it take? For you to get it completed. Hold please. on. Remind me one more time. What was it? So, um, the Elvis Presley one? Or? No. Out of all of the um, hits that you've ever oh. created, um, which one was the most difficult to work on and how long did it take you to do it? Oh, gosh. There's quite a few of those because uh, the, either the record company would send you back in to you know fix that or change this or the artist would you'd have to go and redo the song 15 times. Mm. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'd have to say one of the biggest ones would have to be Shy Guy, which is mm -hmm. Diana King, mm -hmm. Shy Guy. They sent us back in to do that record over again. Really? For the most ridiculous reasons, like change a word or change a, a chord or uh, things that wouldn't make or break the record right. not like really change anything and I think we must have redone that record like five times right. from scratch mm -hmm. and I got to the point where I just sent them the first one again that and we they had accepted done it? after spending huge really? amounts of money and huge amounts of stuff, I just sent them the very first one that we did again he goes oh that's it oh I would have <laughs> just been like Ugh. and which record which another hit that was like so easy just like you know no problems. Mm. And how long did that take? Oh, there's a bunch of those. I've been blessed with those. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. The biggest hit that took that. Uh, um, I want to say Welcome to Jam Rock was pretty, mm -hmm. came together pretty. You did that? Yeah, Welcome to Jam okay. Rock. The whole album. Love that. Yeah, that, that single, right. uh, if I remember correctly, came together pretty. I mean, we, once Damien you know, made that beat right. and put his flow on it, we might have cut the vocals two or three times. I don't remember. It wasn't mm -hmm. that much, but... I mean, I remember that all coming together pretty quickly. Pretty quick. Yeah. But then I would think it's because you work with them so much, so it makes it really easy to get things accomplished. That's a good point, too, because yeah. sometimes you, you work on a song, and you, you think, whoa, this is magic. This is going to be great. And it doesn't really, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. And then other times you work on a song, it's like, this isn't really coming together. We need to change the beat, or maybe change the bass line, or maybe add a guitar. And then all of a sudden, boom, magic. You got mm. it. You got it. Magic. You got it. Yeah. So you never really know. It could go its own way. Huh? Wow. Wow, I just, like I said, man, uh, definitely one of the things I love about music is it's it's something that's it's timeless if you do it right. You know, some of this new music, uh, I, how have you been with the transition? It, it affected me a lot when they went from, you know, I'm a Lenny Williams type of guy, I'm five, six minutes in, you know, mm -hmm. Betty Wright, five, six minutes in. Now they're doing two minutes. One and a half minute. They tick tocking this thing to death. Yeah. You see it. Yeah. You you are a master artistic 
engineer of the music. You are a student to the game. God has blessed you, and you see him cut the music not only in half, but down to a quarter. It's what did you think about that? Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm an old, I, the songs from the 1970s, for me, were 1970s was the best era of music. I'm sorry. What was, the, what was the, your were favorite songs. song? Oh, my God. I got some, oh, 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 my God. I, I'm going to tell you one of mine. It, it would go like this. Baby, come back. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Withers. I mean, you can play with all, oh. all these. They, they told stories. They were storytelling, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it took you on a little bit of a journey. Like, yeah. You know, even like Nights in White Satin. Al you know, Green. The, the Al Green and all these other stuff. They were stories that took you for a journey, you know. Bonsai, man. God, man. I mean, listen, man. Um, I'm a I'm a big fan of just good music. You know what I mean? I love good music. You remember when uh that's what I think Kanye and them called their group one while good music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We got to simplify this thing, man. How do we get the the music back to where where what the used to essence be. is there? Where you know, you you, you have, when the last time you heard uh you remember, you know, this might not be some of your steel old Teddy Pentagrass. Mm -hmm. Turn off the lights. Yeah, uh, my latest, my greatest inspiration. You know, mm. when when are we gonna get back to? I'd like to get back to even uh, the girl is mine. Mm -hmm. I you know, I'm talking about Paul McCartney mm -hmm. and uh, Michael Jackson. Every yeah. day she walks yeah. right in my yeah. dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can rock with that. Yeah, their you, lyrics were clever. You know, uh, I think what's missing in a lot of today's like you were talking about is is just creative writing you know using lyrics creatively uh, you know setting you know using metaphors and you know being clever with lyrics to you know you're writing your you know the words say one thing but it really means something else so like those kind of clever lyrics and and storytelling telling a good story you know some things that really Happen. The best stories are the the real, the true stories that really you really go through, or your mom went through, or your brother went through. Those are like the best stories, right? You can't make the stuff up sometimes. Did you did you what did you think about James Brown when he made the song? Uh, and somebody said that they, oh yeah, I know who that was. But James Brown, this is a man's world. But it wouldn't be mm. nothing without a woman. Uh, see, clever, right? <laughs> right, turn it around, clever. I love stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So just talk about a, just give me a little bit of just the process of just go go down through like going to the studio. What is your mindset? What do you think about when you're going in there to deal with different different music, different people, um, staying all night? How long will I be here? What is a process that you use to get yourself prepared if you're going in? Over the years, I've learned to be prepared for anything. <laughs> anything can happen, and be prepared. You think you might be doing one thing, and you're going to end up doing something totally different, and it's fine. It's good. I love it. Um, it's great because the whole thing is just keep that mindset, that focus of the song, that we're going to make a record. We're making a song. And who knows? You might start on one song and end up on a different one on the same day and never even finish the first one you came in to do. It can go, creativity like that can go in any different direction, right, at any time. So always be prepared mentally and physically because you're going to be there for a while. Sometimes, you know, you do 20-hour sessions and, you know, and, um, yeah, so just having that mental preparedness and physical preparedness. Eat well, sleep as much as you can. I mean, it's hard to sleep sometimes, you know. That's the other thing. We do these marathon sessions where we work on these tracks and you're exhausted. You've been 19 hours. And, and then you walk out of the studio and you're on fire. You're on fire. I, I can't sleep. Why can't I sleep? I've been up for 23 hours. Why can't I sleep? I'm, I, I, you're, you're just hyped, you know, that energy. You know? takes, wow. When I leave the studio, it takes three hours to get to that point where I can actually lay down and just wow. chill. <laughs> you said earlier, uh, and we just were talking a little bit, Dr. Dre, he doesn't work with many people. Mm. He doesn't, how do, you, how do you end up in the studio with Dr. Dre? Well, him, I only had the good fortune of working with Dr. Dre once. He came out here to Vegas and we did, I think about five or six nights here at the hideout studio. Really? Um, and uh, yeah, and he, he had his team of people. And, what year was this? Oh, I wanna say 2015. 
So I he think was, he was working on was it what's the uh, what's the name of the record he was working on? Oh my god, I can't remember it now. Rehab, not rehab. I forget. It was his record. I don't know if he even came out. Or I don't think out. it remember came out because he's the type of guy. That I don't think. I don't think he want to do. He if he do another album, I think it's something that he cringes at the fact. Will it be good enough? Mm. I hadn't talked to him. I kept, but I'm telling you, mm. a guy like that's going to be hard on himself. Yeah, yeah, cr critical. Very every critical. Level, very yeah. critical. Everything that he yeah. puts out, what he's going to do, mm -hmm. how he's going to, mm -hmm. what is it going to do, what how's it going to hit? My classics are set in stone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's how you stay on top, right? Yeah. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. So who who was who was something that somebody after you've worked forty years? You've been forty years in this game. Yes. Like who is somebody that you would like to work with? That I would like to. work Yes. With? Ooh. I have oh, to ask that. There's a, quite a few. Peter Gabriel is one. I okay, love to work. okay. I'm a big Peter Gabriel fan. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. Jeez. Uh, That's. Uh, I'm trying to think now. You got me stumped. Um, yeah. Um, there's. I can't really think of any right now. You really got me stumped. Peter Gabriel for one. Um, Bob Who's Weir, Peter Gabriel? Peter Gabriel, he was, remember Sledgehammer and uh, I don't know, he he was with Genesis, right? He was a keyboard player for Genesis oh, way I've back heard of in Genesis. the day. Okay. Yeah. See, and I'm 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 a little too young. He had that a big record with Kate Bush, Don't Give Up. I remember Kate Bush, the Canadian singer. That was back, I'm going back in the '80s. He's been. Around. He, she, but he does, she was born in '79. I was born in '79. You just so. passed up. She was two. Uh, okay. So he, what he's, he does a lot of world music. He's, mm -hmm. and he's also, you know, just he just a, a, such a talent that I would really love to work with. Got it. Are you? They got a movie coming out in a few days. Yes. yes. Are you going to see this movie? Of course, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect to, when you go to see this movie? Ah, geez, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really expecting anything. I'm just really, my mind is just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's wide open to see how they, I mean, because it's such a story. And it's, you know, he was such a larger than life figure. And, and it's spiritually and musically and, you know, just the, the way he, I don't know, I see I've been so blessed to work with his children all these years to see the influence he's had on his immediate family mm -hmm. and how much respect they carry themselves with and how dignified they are and how hard they work. They don't clown around. These guys are serious, you know, and, mm. and just the, the legacy, you know. So uh, to answer your question, I'm really... I, I can't wait to see this you know, the thing what about, are, it's going to be hard to portray right yeah, yeah. but yeah. the thing that I was one, before I even saw the previews I was like I know they're going to have one of his sons play him I just know it and when I saw that I was like why didn't why didn't any of them want to play him? I'm, I'm not sure the, you know, the, the or the grandkid or what's something. behind all that. But I mean, there, you know, obviously the acting abilities involved, and you know, the casting involved, and all that. I'm sure mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. so much that goes into that. And, right. And, and also in terms of the director of the film and the script mm -hmm, and everything, mm -hmm. to really, you know, what is the essence? And because there's so many different aspects of his life that could be. Right. I mean, you can make 20 movies on this person, right? You, you could make a dozen movies on this guy. Yeah, because so. if you, you saw the previews, right? Yeah, just the previews. And his life, he has so much content. Yes. So I saw the aspect of where they're going, and they showed a couple pieces, but I'm like, I wanted to see everything. Oh that would have been like a really long movie, but yeah. I just wanted That's everything. That's a series. Yeah. They, they <laughs> right? should do a series of they his should. life. They should. That would be an interesting series. That would be interesting. Yeah, really. Because wow. there's so many aspects to it. You know, he... he, he he had such a relatively short life at 30, 36 stories? years of, of age. Does any of his kids ever told you stories about him? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, Give you me know, I mean, story. I've been uh, privy to a few things, but I mean, it's just nice to, just to, the, the energy to be like a work at his house at 56 mm -hmm. Hope Road and, and, and see the, the bullet holes in the right. walls where he, you know, they try to take him mm -hmm. out and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and just the energy, the vibe of right. just being in those rooms and the studios and, and just, you know, you, your mind just. They're very upbeat people. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. And fun and serious at the same time and all that, you know. So what other um, Jamaican artists have you worked with? 
Oh, I've been very blessed. A new Mortimer. I've been working on Mortimer's album, which is going to be coming out soon. That's mm. a really amazing Samurai's record that's just out okay. now called Strength. That's, uh, I've worked on four or five songs on that album, which is really good. Um, my goodness, Jacques Cure, uh, Protégé, Chronix. Mm -hmm. I did Chronix's mm -hmm. first oh, wow. album. Yeah, I like Chronix. did Chronics. that whole album with him. He's amazing. Uh, I've been really blessed to work with a lot no of people. No Shensia yet? No Shensia. Itana. No, Ita uh, oh, you did Itana? Savannah, oh, okay, Itana. I'm working okay. on Itana song right now. Okay, yeah. I like Itana. Yeah. And, or uh, Kofi. I haven't worked with Kofi. She is yeah, amazing. I love her, though. She's amazing. I love... Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a record right now with Mortimer and Kabaka Pyramid mm -hmm. and... Leela Aiki, how do you say her name? Leela Aiki? I think so. I don't, I don't, um, I don't know. I don't wonderful know voice, just okay. a beautiful record. Um, mm. Yeah, so I'm very so blessed. So you've been working with a lot, lot of reggae artists. Yes, yes. Jimmy Cliff, I've been doing of course, a lot of work. He's with an Jimmy icon. Cliff. Yeah, Jimmy and I have done a lot of work together. Let me just over show years. you some right quick. Yeah, he's amazing. Tonto and Metro and Devante, you haven't worked with them? No. Devante okay. Swing from Jersey. It's <laughs> 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 a different Devante. You see what I got in my hand right there in that picture? Uh huh. You see uh -huh. that guy right there? He let me hold that. Uh, Where yours at? Mine are in my house. Come can on. I, can, I, can I? Can I? Sure. I should have brought them. Next time I bring them. No, I need. I need because I, I. I really. I hadn't held one since that day. They're heavy, right? Yeah. They got some I weight know. to them. I think you gonna you gonna bring it up here. <laughs> yes, indeed. Of when course. you you bring it, let me let me take some yes, pictures sir. with it. Uh huh. No, would that be asking too much? I'm here Not to win. <laughs> Not at all. No, no problem. I really, how many you got? I got six. Could you bring me some? I'm serious. Of course, of course. I want to stand right here and read. I want to show people that this is something I want to do. Why well, come out and tell you? I should have told you. Like, bring them up here because people need to be reminded. Like, this is this is a lot of work that goes into what people do. Mm -hmm. And and Bonza, you are special. Everybody don't have no six Grammys. That guy got them. By, that guy mm -hmm. that just left here, mm -hmm. he's got them. Mm -hmm. He's got like six. He's mm -hmm. like you. You guys are. He ain't bring them though. I gotta tell him the same thing. <laughs> I need to hold them and just show. Hey, man, you know. His might be in Chicago though. I don't know if. He I don't know where his is at, but I'm pretty sure if I ask him, he'll bring them to me. Mine are down the street, about ten minutes away. So from you gonna bring? <laughs> you gonna bring them to me, or, or, or do I gotta come over there? What I need to do? Whatever's easy. Either one's fine. This is dope, man. Great accomplishments, man. I mean, the last time I was holding one, it was Ice T's oh, at Ice T House in New Jersey. Nice. Now I'm back in the mix, you know. This is dope, man. Like I, I really, 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 really enjoy seeing you guys, man, and your accomplishments, man. You should be very proud of yourself. I mean, God put you in a situation where, where what you did it counted, and somebody recognizing you for it in this way. A lot of people upset about it. You heard Jay Z about that award the other night. Yes. Sir. His wife never got an album of the year. Uh, uh, um, did you get y'all ain't got one either, have you? No, nobody. You didn't get an album of the year yet, not yet. With nobody, not yet, but we're working on it. We're working on it, okay. Well, I'm just saying, and you a white guy, I think they so. was, I don't, you know no. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Mediterranean, Mediterranean, something close to it. Yeah. So that means they, they, yeah, you, you like, you could pass, but you didn't get it yet. You the album of the year, I don't know, Jay. Bonsai didn't get one yet, so don't feel too bad. You see that right there? Bonsai done did this, you know what I mean? Look at this. This is hardcore. This is it. Man. Hey. Did you drink, uh, did you drink out of this? No. A lot of people did. Oh, yeah. That's something I never they do heard at that the awards. Oh, yeah? yeah? I never yeah, heard I seen of that. I seen them do it the other night. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. Well, to drink out of that. Drink it up. Ah, oh, I never that's, heard of that. That's the, yeah, that's the, that's tradition. I didn't know that. You gotta Champagne. get. Champagne. Champagne, uh, yeah. Next one. Man, hey, listen, man. Y'all see what's going on, man. Boss Talk 101, we here with Bonsai, man. It's going down. We got all type of Grammys. We, we doing what we do, man. Let's go. Stand up. He in the building, man. You, you, hey, you never know who you're going to meet out here in Las Vegas. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Stop playing. Boss Talk 101, what a Boss Talk, man. Did you enjoy yourself on Boss Talk 101? Big time. Big time. Big up. There it is. Big up. That was a big up. <laughs> um, so I see you brought the Grammys here to show us. You have six though. Yeah. And you have three here. Um, mm -hmm. Three. Let's start with the three that's missing first. What three are missing? 
three I don't have here would be for Damien Marley Stony Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, next one for Stephen Marley Revelation. And then the Halfway Tree. And then Halfway Tree, yes. Okay. Damien. And that's by which Stephen Marley? That's Damien. Damien Marley. Album, yeah. Okay. So where are those? those At are home? My house. Yeah. Okay. okay. My, my mom hijacked a couple too, you know. She had to have the she first was showing one. Them all. Especially Halfway Tree because that was my first one. So oh, that was the first one. She she hijacked that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> And what year did you get that one in? Halfway Tree must have been, who, 96, 97, okay. probably? 96 or 97. And Stony Hill? That was, two, what, two years ago? 20, oh, okay. 2020, 2021? Okay. 2021. And then the other one, Revelations? Oh, uh, that was 2019, 2018-ish. Okay. I can't, I'm trying to remember the years. So, so, so um, Stony Hill is the last one you've got? Yes. Okay. And these in front of you are? Welcome to Jamrock, which of is course. 2005. Yes. And then Mind Control, the original Mind Control, Stephen Marley's album. Uh, That's 2007. And then we redid the whole album in an acoustic format, and it won a Grammy two years later. Did you think that that would have won a Grammy? No, again? that was a real. Because I'm like, you got it already. Like I know, right? That was a surprise and a pleasant surprise at that, for sure. Yeah. When you hear that your name or his name is up for the Grammy, because it's his name that they call, and because he gets a Grammy, you get a Grammy, or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, on mine, it'll display mix engineer, recording and mix engineer, which is the role mm -hmm. I play on the albums. So does everybody who um, works on an album that when they get a Grammy, does everybody who work on the album get a Grammy the, as well? Certain people are entitled to, like the producer, I think mm -hmm. the recording studio, uh, certain musicians, compo really? composers, things of that nature. Wow, yeah. so you don't even have to be the person up front, you can be the, the guy behind yeah. as long and as still you, get the Grammy. As long as your name's on the record and you did the work and you were you know, a, a part of the making of, right? So. How did you feel the first time you heard he was up for a Grammy? Your first, first Grammy, oh, how did you feel about I it? I was over the moon. I was like really excited, you know, because we put so much time into the, you know, we took, you know, so many hours and months and so much time goes into these. So it's nice to get, you know. Yes, recognized. Th this is very rewarding. And the other thing for me as an engineer, one of the most rewarding things is when I hear the jams on the radio. Mm. When, I, when it's on the radio, on the airwaves, I'm or like, when you're driving down the yeah, street driving, and you hear and there, somebody and, else listening and, to it. And it pops up on the radio like, that's I spent a thousand hours on that song. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most rewarding thing for me. Uh, so, with all these Grammys you've had, have you been to the Grammys? Yes, a couple times, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you went up there with him whenever? No, I never went up on the stage. I was always in the audience just watching. Okay, I wasn't sure that he brought you up there too and yeah. be like, come on. No, yeah. it's okay. interesting how the, the Grammys work because they don't always, you know, they don't televise every award. So. Right. Oh, really? They don't? Not that I'm aware of. I mean... They only do certain... Because we know when you're at home watching it, you assume that everything you're seeing... Yeah. Yeah, they do have ceremonies, and I think it takes place over two days, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm, and, uh, and yeah, because there's so many categories, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many, like when I'm voting, I'm a member, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm a voting member, and you get like, you know. Oh, so you, so your vote. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay. So, but there's so many categories, like spoken word, best children's, you know, best comedy record. There's so many, gospel, bluegrass. Does it make you have to research? Because if there's so many different categories, and I'm sure you don't know everybody. Right. So when you're going through, yeah. or do you skip some? Can, does it allow you to skip some, or you have to vote on No, you don't, have, you don't, you can skip. But okay. they've really changed the, the voting process in a, such a great way now because years ago you had to go and research and look up these mm. bluegrass bands or gospel or whatever category, jazz. Now they put links right on the right on the ballot. You can click oh, links right and on and take audition. You to yeah, so that's a really it. great thing. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. I was glad to see that. So what's the next album that you think that, whether it's out there already, because I know the Grammys just passed, mm. but the next album that's coming up that you're like, I, that's going to get a Grammy. Yes. What album is that? Uh, okay, we got a couple here. I'm thinking Mortimer. Mm -hmm. I have 11 songs that mixed on that record. That's a beautiful, his album is amazing. I think it's going to drop later this year. Okay. The Mortimer album. You know album. you're going to get a Grammy from and, that. And it's such a good, Damien's on it. I mean, we've got a bunch of guests on it, featured mm -hmm. artists. Um, the Tribal Seeds album that just dropped, that's a potential. Samurai, Samurai's album Strength, mm -hmm. which just came out like about a month ago. Okay. That's a really beautiful album. Um, I would say those three right now off the okay. top of my head, yeah. Because 
can you really know though if you're if it's gonna get it or not? No, it's you know. It's... Because have you done one in the past where you thought that okay that's gonna get a Grammy but it didn't? Oh yeah, many times. Which one? Yeah. Oh, which one was the which one was the most disappointing one? They didn't like it's so good, but they just did not vote it. Uh, I wouldn't say disappointing, but I was I had my heart set on was probably Chronics. Chronics. The Chronics album, oh. yeah. Has Chronics Chronics got a um a Grammy yet? Not that I'm aware of. I'm mm. aware of but that album was Which, such a what's great. What's the name of that album? Uh, Chronolog Chronology. 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 Yeah, it's okay. a beautiful album. It's really okay. good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing these awards over. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, definitely gonna hold it. <laughs> Can I hold it? Okay. Please, please. Okay. This is. It's heavy, they are, really they got, heavy. They got some weight to it. How much do you think one of these are worth? Like, if 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 somebody, because you know you have some of these artists who fall on hard time and have tons of these. Mm -hmm. Like, if they were supposed to go pawn it or sell it, that's a good would question. Would it work? Be, would it be worth something? I guess they would be. I mean, the bigger the artist, uh, mm -hmm. I would imagine, the more they would be worth. Uh, right. But uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. And this, as gold as it looks, it's not made out of real gold. I wish it was. You know, but. It's just, it's the accomplishment, it's the reward, right? Yes, exactly. And they're pretty. And they're they, pretty. They look nice. They're shiny. They're shiny. <laughs> they're Boss talk. <laughs> Boss talk just a little bit different. 100%. They go a little extra mile. Yeah. Um, with your career, what would you think would be the pinnacle of your career to you? What would be, or what would be, or would maybe be, has? Yes. Do you feel like no, you've? Do you think you've gotten there already? No, I like the you way you phrased it. You did it perfect. That, you <laughs> see, that was that was perfect. Um, yeah, no coincidence there. Um, just to just to continue making quality records, good sounding quality records, good songs, memorable songs, mm -hmm. songs that are thought provoking, songs that make you cry, songs that make you laugh, songs mm -hmm. that make you fall in love. You know, just good songs and, and good sounding records. Yeah. How hard is it to create one of those records? Like, like for example, Michael Jackson, he create records where <laughs> when we dead and gone, it's still going to be playing for generations to come and everybody's going to still end. Right. Yeah. How hard is it to create a classic? Because some of these songs, they come and they go. And they come yes. and they go. It's strictly for my baby. It don't matter if exactly. you exactly. The reason yeah. it don't ma it like, don't matter if you black or white means something. Yeah. It, it, it means it, what you yeah. said yeah. earlier with me and you. And, and it's catchy. It's the phrases are different, right? Yeah. And they stand the test of time because of the lyrical content. It it meant what it meant back because in those days, and it saying. still means the same thing to And me. even Thriller, Thriller is like what um, Halloween anthem, everybody mm -hmm. plays that every right. time around Halloween. Yeah, that was brilliant. That was yes. a brilliant, brilliant masterpiece of work. So it's like none of his songs, all of his songs actually, my daughter who's 18, she'll play every single one of them. Her, mm -hmm. Whitney Houston, the same way. So how hard is it for an artist to create timeless classics like that it is a challenge it really is you've got to find that thing that's going to make it timeless and make it you know stand the test of time and still relate in mm -hmm. the future that's why using clever lyrics you know using lyrics cleverly i should say mm -hmm. you know having a command of the english language if you're writing in english um, to tell stories to paint pictures with words to use metaphors to get tricky and clever with with words so that you know it's the obvious is hidden mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. biggie biggie small man what mm -hmm. what music did y'all what oh album was that this first one ready to die you talking about uh you talking about uh juicy uh not not the one with I, who shot you and all that Ooh. yeah i worked on a lot of those who shot you he was biggie was oh my eyes working with biggie was just who shot you yeah huh? Pac didn't like that did you work with Pac too no i know no. Tupac. so yes. only biggie Pac only biggie. didn't like that what was this how did y'all this is good stuff right here <laughs> how did y'all process this song you was in the studio when they done it what was the mindset when they did who shot you See, I wasn't, mm, for me personally, I didn't really fully Get understand the what gravity the, of, I mean, I, I, I kind of understood what was going on, but I was a little, I have to be honest, I was a little naive as to how deep this 
really was. was. And it wasn't until, you know, the record came out and I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, wow. It was, it, yeah. the lyrics was going, wasn't he? Yeah. But he had the ability of just. Did he, he write? Just, he, he, he Did wrote, he write he verses? Wrote, he wrote verses. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Did he write verses? Not only that, he didn't write them on paper. They all came from me. Like of all these other so rappers, all these. Stuff. You've never seen nobody else sit, do that. We would sit there and I'd run the beat for hours, just run the beat, run the beat. And they would write their lyrics, write their lyrics write their, for hours and then go throw down. And yes, they were good. They were whatever. They were awesome. But Biggie would just step up to Mike, go hit it Bonds. And I just hit record and he would just, and then we keep come back and we play it back. He'd listen. He go, "No, Bonds, you know, let me do that one more time." I was like, "Sure." He's like, "No, you go, you know, this is analog. So you hit record, it's gone for mm -hmm. good. No digital copies. This is analog tape." And it so sounded he, good to you. Biggie, but Biggie, 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 Bonds, let me let me hit that one more time. I said, like, "You want me to keep that? I'll go on a different track." He goes, "No, you can erase that. Go over that." Oh my God, that was fire! I was okay. We're here. Well, he's gonna do it again. He's gonna do it even better. Mm -hmm. He get out there. I hit record. Completely different story, completely different lyrics, completely different record, completely different everything. And I was like, and I'm erasing what we just did, and I'm, I can't stop the tape because he's recording. And I'm like, dude, you just told a whole different story, and it was just as good as the last one. Wow. He, he was just prolific like that, like just spitting them out. But he never wrote them down. It all came right from the top of his head. The right whole, from and hardly ever stopped to punch in and, and you know pick it up halfway through or whatever. Mm, no. Not very often. He would he would He'll kick, change it at the end if he that whole to. thing. Once in a while, maybe catch the end or something or catch an mm. intro or whatever. But Do you think he was, I think he was like the first one doing that, and I think everybody else started trying to do that as well afterwards. Jay started doing it. Jay-Z does that. Uh, Lil Wayne does that. You know, they don't write. A lot of people say we don't write. They start punching. Bumby don't Some write. people, try, yeah, Bumby write. Oh, he right? Oh, yeah. But he bad at it, too. Don't play with Have you Bun ever worked B. with Bun B? No. No. Yeah, that's to. my guy uh, right there. Now you asked about who I'd like to work with. There's Bun B. Bun B. <laughs> you like to work with Bun? Yeah, well, why? Hey, why, yeah. did, why would I you like to work with Bun? I style, the flow, the style. I'm going to hook that up. Thing. I'm yes. going to put y'all in that together. That would be wonderful. <laughs> you like, so you like Bun. What, what, uh -huh. Did you like when he collabed with Jay-Z on that um, What's your favorite? Big Pimpin'? Oh, gosh. What's the the one with the OO, the one that's on the single that's out right now? I forget the title of it. You See, he on it like. I don't even know. I just love it when I hear his voice and his rhythms and his flow. And so you like track. his new stuff. Yeah. You don't like the old. No, you like the old and the new. Yeah, they're all good. Did yeah. you listen to UGK? Mm, not so much. I don't think. Okay. You just became a fan of yeah. Bun B. Oh, Bun B. I, have, I have to be honest about that. Yes. Okay. You became a fan yeah. of Bun B. Yeah, yeah. Did you? You know, you got Trill Burgers. He got a restaurant down there. He making a lot of money. Yes. Uh -huh. He's it's got a burger Trill place. Burgers. You got to come down in Houston. Where, oh, it's, it's in Houston. Houston. That's uh -huh. where he lives. Oh, okay. Wow. But it is blowing up. Uh -huh. Crazy. Yeah, we just have you worked with any other um, southern artists. Probably work with any. He's an uh, East Coast guy. They're proud. I know. I'm just so, asking. Let me tell you something. <laughs> These proud East Coast people, I don't know. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. no, but they're good, too, though. He's This guy is different. Mm -hmm. I got to respect you. Almost. You're multi-talented. Oh, he's just dope, man. Like, you gave your life to this, man. Yes. Yeah. A lot and, of and hours. he gave me life. You know? Yeah. He yeah, really yeah. does. He really gave me life. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what would be crazy? Have you ever thought about working with like a Japanese artist, like pop? I have. Like K-pop? Once I did, not K-pop, I did a Japanese artist. Her name was Pushim. Okay. Was back in the early 90s, mid 90s. Uh -huh. No, maybe mid to late 90s actually. And I went to Japan and worked in Tokyo. Wow. And I love Japanese culture. I Cause you know love, they love reggae and all of that too. They love reggae mm -hmm. over there. Oh my God, do they love reggae. But, um, was she speaking in her language when she was doing? They did, we did a mix. Some of it was mixed. Mix? Some of it was. And, oh, okay. Yeah. So how hard is it to do something with someone that you're not really understanding the yeah. words of what they're... Good how hard question. Is that? that's, even in Spanish or in French right. or in some of these other, like, oh, some of these other languages that I've been blessed to work. You know, I don't know what the lyrics are saying, mm -hmm. so I try to either get a translator or get it translated for me. Because, you know, if I'm putting an effect on a vocal or doing something, I want to know what, what, is it? what the word is. So it's very important for <laughs> yes. you to know what the words are saying. Yeah, exactly. So, you know how they always said music is like a universal language. So it's not really just listening to what they're, the rhythm and the beat. It's mm -hmm. not just that. You have to know the words. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's very important. Did okay. you do Warning with uh, Biggie? Uh, 
know which one was warning. Ooh, who the whatever. fucking this paging me at five forty six in the morning, uh, crack of dawning, yeah. let them yawning, yeah. wipe the cold from my eyes. Is yeah. <laughs> you know that one? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. I need to It's been so long since I listened to that record. It's, it's, I need to go back and listen to it again. But it you was you good. was in there on that one? All of them. That whole first album. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm going down through that now. You got me excited. Let me see something else. Hold on. Yeah. It was, uh, Everyday what's struggle. The seed, C4, two me and my bitch. No beef, no more. <laughs> hey, Big Papa. Yeah, Big Papa. That was a that hit. Was that was Ooh, huge. Did you realize that yeah. was going to be that yeah. huge when you I didn't work on that one too much. I did some of the recordings of the track on that, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do the final mix on that. So track. you was mixing it and engineering to make engineering. sure it was it was it was right. Like yeah. the sound was right. That's you got an ear for it. Like you know when it's right. Yeah. That's the How hard was it engineering and doing that during that time? Because the, the equipment was different. It was, yeah, a lot of different analogs. So every, Is it harder with analog? Uh, I don't, for me, no, because I was born and raised to. in it. I mean, I grew up with analog gear and, and making these records using analog consoles and analog equipment. And so for me, I, it's home. I love it. And, you know, I do everything digitally now. Everything's in the digital realm, of course. But I love, and I try to integrate the two with a lot of the records mm -hmm. I work on. I do a lot of hybrid where I'll, I'll, I'll run, I'll flow some tracks, bass, guitars, drums, through analog gear. Mm. So I have a hybrid of digital and analog together mm -hmm. to give it a little bit, that warmth, that beef, right. that nice warm sound you know mm. yeah wow but. thank you so much man you 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 really 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 made my day and i'm coming over there and get thank them you. them grammys and hug them like babies uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> but you said you worked with dr dre right yeah just this one just the one just time one week he was here for about a week he came okay. here to vegas yeah okay that's cool have man. you ever done jay-z yet no, I've, I met him once, but I haven't never worked with him. What did y'all say when you met him? What did you say? Hey, how you doing, oh Jay-Z? You were I was, nervous? I was hey, what are you doing, Jay-Z? I was in a studio in Manhattan Center Studios in, in New York City, and we've been working. I don't forget what record I was working on, but it was all night. And I just fell asleep on the couch. I'm in the, on, in the control room <laughs> on the couch. Like, yeah. And he, Jay-Z comes in with one of his friends. And his friend starts making all this noise. And Jay-Z's like, stop that. This man's probably, he's trying to, he looked at me. He says, this man's trying to sleep. He probably hasn't slept in three days. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at Jay-Z, he's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look back and be like, dang, I should have got up and had a conversation with him? <laughs> I was like, that, I come out of my sleep, I was like, that was Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Wow, I, I just, man, like, like you, you, you got a lot of stories, man. You've been in a lot of rooms, man, with a lot of important people, you know what I mean? Very blessed. And so you're very blessed mm -hmm. to be done, done, done rubbed elbows with the right group of people, you know what I mean? R&B, man, I mean, Jodeci? Yeah, a lot of Jodeci sessions. I mean. Which one was it? Was it? You're everything I need. After, after the Fenin record came out. <laughs> oh, that, the Fenin was the name of that record. You the got Fiennin. me that one. That, after that, we started working together, and 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 you yeah, did some remixes with Timberland, and we did some remixes. What you know about Timberland? Oh, Timberland, we did a lot of work together. Missy Elliott, Mary J. You know about Missy Elliott, Mary J. Yeah. You mixing all this music. We were working before. together. All now, where was the studio? Faith did? Evans. I did Faith Evans' first album, that whole first record. You did the whole Faith. Faith. It's a great record. Man, that girl could sing. Missy mentions my name on a couple of tracks. No. She says, Bonsai, mix me out. No, for yeah. real. Which one? Do you know it's which one Jodeci, it is? A Jodeci remix. And also, you're all I need. To get you to on that song? They say your name on there? The remix of it. I think one of those she mentions my name on. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's big. I got to go back and Who listen now. Smith & Wesson, we did a remix with Smith & really? Wesson. Really? Right? Yeah. Like, 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 okay, you and Missy. How was Missy when oh, you was working with her in Timberland? I love Missy. She is wonderful. She's just on point. Fun to work I, with? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I love her creative mind. Yeah. I, I mean, really do you do. keep contact with any of these people? No. Not really, but I need to uh, because there's... Y'all are there's so uh, conservative and reserved. I don't like that. Well, like, I'm not you know, like that. As the years go by and years and years, People and I moved by. to the West Coast. Yeah, but you still then, call. But, you know, and but there's a, just to let you guys know, there's a movie in the works here. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a film being made about my life. So oh, I'm, I'm, wow. re I'm reaching out. I reached out to Missy. I reached out to Mary J. I'm reaching Who's out doing to Timberland. They go. Don't come right back. That's, they respect so you. We're, we're shooting a little documentary about my life. Who's doing? Wow. The, who's doing the film? It's, it's a 
film production out of Hollywood. They're going to sh- shop it to Netflix wow. and Amazon Prime and whoever wants it. I can't wait it. to see that. Who Man. would you have playing you? Me? Oh, it's, doc- it's a real it's documentary. It's a documentary. Yes. Okay. So this is going to talk about. Yeah, I didn't know if they was going to show like He's going to probably like talk, a right? Shit. He's going to talk. Like, yeah, I remember this, and they're going to ask him questions. And see, it was such, 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 that's a documentary. But, but what's real important is I want to be with these people that were all Of course. Yes. So that they can remind me. Remember that time, Von like, when this went down? Remember that time? I was like, oh, That'd they have cool. a better memory than I do. You, you know? Like you would be a friend of Snoop. You hadn't met Snoop? No. That's one you you like to meet him with. I've worked on some of his music, but I haven't met Really? Yeah. Just the tr- he's thrown some vocals on some of Stephen and Damien stuff and gave it, sent sent me his vocals and I touched them up, put them in the track. Wow! Yeah. I and like you haven't done been... Buju Banton yet. Yes, I worked with Buju a bunch did? of times. Yeah, Buju's awesome. I yeah. love Buju. Yeah, he's amazing. He's more Jamaican his, artist than everybody. I went to, to his concert whenever he first came back home, mm. and we flew down and went to his concert. Nice. That first one that was huge. He is. He's just. He's amazing. He's Which awesome. ones did you work on for him? Uh, with, mostly with Stephen. Like, uh, was it uh, Stephen? and Damien's tracks um, uh, Soldiers in Ja Army mm-hmm, isn't he mm-hmm, on the Ja mm-hmm, Army track mm-hmm. I think he's on that track there's a couple others on Stephen's you know records I'm trying to remember the titles I'm terrible with titles they work together a lot yeah yeah. yeah. he was always in the studio with us with Stephen and them yeah he'd be coming through and hanging. they're, they're really you. close yeah. yeah they're just really good friends and He's his energy is just Wonderful. It's awesome. Wow. Man, hey, man, listen, man. Uh, you know, I had to get you in here, man. I hope we've done you justice. We show love to the people that we gravitate to. We're up here all the time. So when we're here, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I got your number now. So I can call you myself. Anytime. And I'm coming over to your house. So I don't Tomorrow. leave. I'm like a dog. When you feed me, I just keep coming. <laughs> all right. All no, right. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll have the food ready. <laughs> No, but I'm coming by just like I said. I want to see. I, I just want to hold those and take pictures with yeah. you, and just in, 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 incorporate them in this film. I mean, in this mm-hmm. in this interview. Okay, let's do that. That'd be yeah, that's live, man. That's dope, man. Thank you so much for coming Thank on Boss Talk. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Bonsaicaruso.com or uh, emails bonsaicaruso at gmail. Wow, man. Thank you. Hey, man. Make sure you guys watch the clips, man. Bonsai. Like like Karate Kid, Bonsai. How'd you get that name before I get off here? Okay, Bonsai with a Z, B-O-N-Z-A-I. Mm-hmm. It's a kamikaze term. I used to, when I was a teenager, or when I was a kid, I used to race motocross. So I rode dirt bikes right. off-road. And it was a term, if you were, I was crazy. I was fast and I was insane. I used to race at Raceway Park in English wow. in New Jersey. And I was just fast and crazy. And said, that was bonsai. We used to use the term bonsai, like mm-hmm. kamikaze, you're nuts. I was crazy on a motorcycle. Wow, that's it. Yeah. Man, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank we you love so you. Thank it's you. been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. And also make sure you guys watch this next clip. It's about to be crazy, man. Bonsai all over again. Just a little bit more slice and dice. Mm-hmm. And if you like this, clip that you just watched, oh my God, the next clip, it has so much information. He dropped jewels after jewels, so you definitely gotta see this. And wait a minute, what about your, uh, We I, I gotta ask this one more thing, your brand, your what do you have, goodies here? Yes, what I did was, you bring me? Okay, I also um, have joined for- forces with Audio Wave Records in Oregon, Robin, and I want uh, black he, he came up, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. He, we have the bonsai cannabis brand. So wow! We have, it's and it's a healing cannabis for healing vibes to help people, and um, so that's coming out in in dispensaries these days. Already, I just had to get that on there. See, I ain't forgetting nothing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm all in the goodie bag, man. He brought us some good goodies. We're gonna go through it, man, and we appreciate him, man. We love him, man. It's going down, man. Boss Talk One Hundred One, what a boss is talking. And we out.